And there's other, other examples. You know, David Colombo, I don't know if you heard about this uh, very young guy at 19 years old who managed to take control of 25 Teslas. Um, the, the, uh, the, the example at the top was quite amusing, actually. Uh, uh, Yandex is a, uh, the Uber uh, equivalent in uh, Russia, and uh, several thousand taxis at some point uh, last year were sent to a centralized square in uh, Moscow at the same time. So you see, see the split here is, is quite interesting. Again, uh, the intent is to focus on maximum impact for a reason. And you know, there's a few more details about uh, what this activity entails in terms of vulnerability exploits, uh, PII, personal data, etc. So, um, so now we come to a section that I, I really, really enjoy, and it's the financial impact. I think for the first time, we have been able to give a structure to what is the real impact. Because you know, when we talk about ransomware, when we talk about cyber attacks, we normally talk about the amounts that are demanded in exchange for making the problem go away. And this is an example of a, a tier two in Taiwan that uh, was affected by a $70 million ransomware request. But there is a lot more. Um, and we tried to look at uh, a number of uh, categories here on uh, the right-hand side. Uh, if, you, you know, if you have the patience, uh, I think it's interesting to look at each one of them. Uh, vehicle safety operations and recalls. Recalls are a big topic. Uh, data and privacy breaches. Vehicle theft and break-ins, uh, service and business disruption, legal and regulatory compliance, fraud uh, and brand and reputation. So we, we identified these seven different categories. And um, there's a specific example I would like to talk about. I will not mention the OEM name, respectfully. But essentially, a very well-known EV OEM um, was affected by a white hat uh, initiative actually carried out in France. And um, uh, the team was able to take control of the uh, energy management uh, system gateway. Potentially, this could have led to taking control of the vehicle. Now, you need to imagine a fleet, wherever it is, uh, vehicles uh, you know, running at 70 kilometers an hour or whatever. Um, potentially being affected by uh, you know, a control on brakes, on the engine, or battery, whatever. And uh, this potentially, is, again, for credibility purposes, I keep saying potentially, right? Because it is important that we do not overemphasize. Potentially, this uh, attack could have affected three million vehicles. It didn't, but it could have. And um, the way we try to calculate the financial impact is to look at three of the seven uh, items that we mentioned earlier. So we look at, uh, uh, actually, it's two categories and uh, three topics. Vehicle safety operations and recalls from an OTA update perspective and a battery recall perspective and uh, legal and regulatory compliance. So. Essentially, the, the topic here is, in addition to the ransom amount, there's other costs that need to be taken into account by an OEM, potentially. Um, th th this is public information that we got from Aurora Labs, the potential cost of uh, 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 per line of code update. Uh, we made some very, very conservative assumptions in terms of the number of uh, ECUs uh, affected, the amount of data, the cost of uh, cost per battery, and the very, very minute proportion of uh, the fleet, um, and, and uh, you know, cost per claimant, and, and again, a very conservative um, portion of uh, the, the, the owners. And as you can see, very easily, uh, this additional cost can go from, you know, 15 to 50 million dollars and it's real stuff and it hurts 
And so the, the goal is really to make sure that we play on uh, two fronts. One is the technical opportunity to reduce the potential attack. And that's where, you know, there's uh, an ongoing race, if you like. But the other front, which is also very important, is the motivation. And I will get to this point at the end. And th this is the last section, and it's about um, the uh, power of uh, generative AI. Everyone talks about it. Uh, everyone cannot talk about it. Uh, but essentially, if you look at uh, Gen AI from the perspective of bad actors, uh, it's an amazing tool, right? You know, you can use large language models to identify vulnerabilities. Uh, you can automate the process of uh, 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 looking f up for API information. You can simulate attacks. So, you know, just uh, with the launch of ChatGPT, the time it takes to perform certain attacks. You know, the, the last example that I mentioned earlier about some carry, it took two years of preparation with, uh, with um, a ChatGPT-like application. This time could go down to two weeks, two days, two hours, right? And also, the, the cost of uh, perpetrating these attacks goes down. And, and so the return of investment needs can also uh, uh, be reduced. Now, this may sound like a bleak view, but technology has always brought about the positives and uh, negatives, right? You know, with uh, openness, with connectivity, with uh, software-defined features, we're opening the world to... Uh, additional consumer convenience. At the same time, we're opening to risks. And, uh, and there is a positive adoption of uh, generative AI um, within, for example, the vehicle SOC, the security operations center that uh, car manufacturers or uh, uh, mobility uh, or operators are implementing in order to monitor their fleet, their connected fleet and to um, you know, guard against uh, this kind of risks. So generative AI can be used uh, to automate uh, a lot of um, internal uh, data analysis and essentially go towards what is defined as hyper-automation. I don't know if you've heard this concept, but it's uh, becoming very, very popular. And, um, and essentially, what we mentioned from the beginning, there's always a need for two conditions for attacks, any kind of attacks, including cyber attacks. The opportunity, which is given by connectivity, software control functionality, the ability to perpetrate these attacks remotely. The motivation, and there is a financial motivation behind because uh, essentially being able to control centralized applications gives access to massive fleets. And so either the potential damage or the potential cost is high. There is an acceleration effect due to generative AI and um, uh, the use of APIs to perform these attacks that we need to uh, take into consideration. And so this is essentially uh, the outcome of our, our research. And uh, as you can imagine, as upstream, we use the, uh, the research to, uh, to bring to market the relevant solutions against these risks. So uh, thank you for, for your attention. That's, uh, that's all for, uh, for today. Rick, Vickery. Thank you very much, Rick. If you have any questions, as I say, feel free to send me an email or uh, I'll be around. Thank you.